Why should you care about plants? Well, uh, one of the things I like about plants is that there's, a, there's a, a tree in Southern California called General Sherman, which is the largest living organism in the world. So it's absolutely huge. It's about 300 feet tall. It's a giant redwood. And if you haven't seen much or thought much about plants, go and have a look at that giant redwood because it's absolutely phenomenal. You are breathing and living because of plants. I think maybe that's the most obvious one. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for plants. They've been so fundamental in shaping like the environment that surrounds us. Um, but, you know, from a molecular biology perspective, I'm just fascinated by the fact that plants are able to perceive and respond to all these signals. Like, they're rooted in a place and they have to deal with all these challenges they're faced with. They cannot run away, we would do that, but plants can't. So they need to be very clever in like adjusting both their development and responses to that. So they probably, I would argue, and maybe somebody will disagree with this, but the most clever living organisms around. One of my favorite things about plant sciences is the, um, the production of the semi-dwarf wheat. And that has been attributed to saving billions of lives. And I think that really demonstrates the power of plants and the power of plant research. What are you wearing? Some clothes. Where did it come from? That's enough. Plants. So yes, like you have to worry about plants. That's the best thing, like whatever you are wearing, it comes from cotton. Cotton, it came from like a cotton. That's a plant. So that's a really good thing. Like if you are not worrying about plant, you have to go for hunter and gather and uh, gather thing, and you have to wear animal sheets and things. So that's the thing. You have to worry about plant. The nervous system is what's in control of our movement, our thoughts, our emotions, and it works by firing electricity. And when it fires too much electricity, we get very jittery, very anxious. And we have these inbuilt receptors called GABA receptors that when they're stimulated, we chill right down. Um, it's the same receptors that Xanax stimulates. Uh, it's the same receptors that alcohol stimulates, which is why you drink a bit too much, you lose control of your movement. Well, there's this root from Passiflorin canata, which is passion, also known as passion flower, really gorgeous vine. And it stimulates these GABA receptors. And it was shown in a study to be as effective as oxazepam for anxiety. Um, it took a little bit longer to kick in, but you didn't have the side effects such as slurred, slurred speech and um, not being able to operate heavy machinery because your movement's all over the place. So, yeah, I just really love that. Having taught in secondary school, I used to get told by secondary school students all the time that plants were boring and why should they have to learn about plants? Uh, why should they have to learn about plants? And I used to tell them show me an animal that can grow a brand new organ just because it needs it in that environment and I'll agree with you that animals are more interesting. You would always, always get one student who would come back and say, oh, if you cut a lizard's tail off, it will grow back. Yes, some varieties of lizard will do that, but they will grow the same structure in the same place. They can't grow an extra tail because they need a bit of extra balance in a certain circumstance. Whereas a plant has to adapt to do all of the same life processes that an animal does without being able to kind of move from where it's rooted. So that I think is probably what makes plants the most interesting. About 15 years ago we started working on a wheat pathogen uh, and it's called carnal bunt um, because it comes from the region in carnal uh, and I was on a Gatsby uh, summer course with one of the tutors and he said did you know that the reason why we have things like gingerbread is because when you get wheat contaminated with carnal bunt and tilesia it tastes on a rather nasty fishy odour. Uh, and before they had chemicals to control it, they would use things like ginger and spices to cover over the foul taste of poor quality wheat. And I think that's amazing. My best plant fact, I think, I mean, there are lots to choose from. This is quite a complicated thing to, to think about. But I am going to pick uh, the concept of distributed decision making in plants. So uh, we think of plants, they don't have a nervous system. We think they don't really make decisions, they're passive, but that's you know, really not the case. And they do make appropriate decisions for the environment they live in. Um, and there's a lovely, elegant story about chemicals coming up from the roots to say we, we've grown this much roots so we can support more leaves. And there are chemicals coming down from the leaves to the root saying, well, we're, we're doing this much photosynthesis, we can support growing more roots and so you 
So the plant is making a decision, now's the right time to grow more roots, or I'm okay with roots, I can grow more leaves. And it's just, I love that idea of something that looks very passive being a, a decision maker. Um, and I think that's, that's really cool.